I'm Micah Pusey. I'm the Community Minister of the Arts here at Judson Memorial Church, and I'm honored to be here with Andre Serrano, who is currently showing residents of New York around New York City. Andre, thanks for being here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> when was the last time you were at Judson Memorial Church? Okay, funny you ask that, because the last time I was here, I was 16 years old, and I came because of Lenny Bruce's uh, memorial service in 1966. And I don't remember if I uh, read about it or if I dropped in, you know, accidentally. But I remember walking in and hearing Allen Ginsberg uh, reciting a phenomenal poem about blessed, uh, you know. And I remember it was a packed house and uh, I, I was very moved. And, you know, I, I'm just glad to have been here for that moment because I think it was a moment in history. And uh, so that was the last time I was in Judson Church. And what was it like to be in sort of what is known as a, a house of worship or a house of God to people and, and with stained glass windows and things, but to walk in and see something that didn't exactly re resemble a church service, was it, did it sort of make you question what, what a church could be? What was the... Well, actually, it, it did look like a, a church service to me, uh, but it was also an important literary moment, uh, you know, an historical moment, because it was the death of Lenny Bruce and all of these people the Fugs, uh, I remember the Fugs were here, um, you know, Ginsburg, and so many other people, uh, notables of the time, uh, came to honor Lenny Bruce and see him off. And so for me, I thought it was more of a, uh, you know, uh, a literary event, you know, a cultural event, rather than a religious one. Got it. And you were born in New York City. I was born in New York City, yes. How has New York made you into the artist that you are now? Well, I always think that I'm a New Yorker, and it comes out, you know, in my work. You know, my work sometimes is hard-hitting, it's very direct, and it's also uh, influenced by many things. And that's all part of being a New Yorker. You know, I, I, you know I've seen a lot, I've done a lot, you know, and I'm, I'm happy to be part of the fabric of this city in good ways and bad. You know, uh, you know, later on, in the 70s, you know, uh, when I hit my 20s, I was a drug addict on the Lower East Side, uh, selling drugs and taking drugs. And so I, I saw the, you know, a certain part of New York and I, I've seen the good side, I've seen the bad side, you know, and I, I feel comfortable with the high end and the low end because uh, to me it's all the same. As a New Yorker, I embrace everything. Sure. And to me, viewing your work, I've always seen that, I, at least knowing that you were raised Roman Catholic, mm -hmm. I see a lot of grappling with that in your work. Mm -hmm. Do you do you still commit to that Roman Catholicism in any way? Do you have a, a spirituality or is, is your spirituality your art now? You know, I commit to being a Christian. I'm still a Christian. I'm not a, a Roman Catholic in the sense that I don't go to church except for, uh, you know, aesthetic reasons. And I only go to churches in Europe because they like museums to me. But I, I don't feel the need to, to go to church uh, to pray because uh, I pray at home. And actually, I'm a collector of Christian iconography, uh, particularly anything from earlier than uh, 15th, 16th century, 17th century. So I have uh, you know, a lot of uh, objects of the church at home with me. And, and so I feel uh, connected to, to God and to Christ all the time. Can you tell us a little bit, especially since we're in the room where Piss Christ was on on display. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us about that journey, although you probably talked about it a lot, yeah. um, about what sort of the, the response to that work, what did it do to you as a Christian? Well, first of all, I never realized Piss Christ was on display here. I think it was. Wow, no one ever told me that. <laughs> uh, so, well, that I'm honored. I'm honored that, I'm, I, that Piss Christ was shown in the same place where Lenny Bruce, uh, you know, had his memorial. And uh, Judson Church is, you know, I think, I know even though I didn't come back to Judson Church, I was around the square long enough to know that this place has been part of New York City's history, particularly in the West Village and everything that happened, uh, you know, in the 60s and 70s and, and forward from there. It, you know, it, it's an important part of the community and so I, I feel very honored to be, have been embraced in this way by it. <laughs> we, we're good at embracing iconography like that. It's, we like here, I think, constantly questioning our Christianity. 
So we can say that we're Christian, we can say that we're agnostic, but we all sort of find a place in that question, and that's where we find our most sort of spiritual moments. So Piss Christ, does, I know, does that to me, and I think it did that to most of the people who saw it here. Well, the thing about Piss Christ, I feel like, uh, you know, wh whether you, th you see it as, as uh, you know, blasphemous or, or, or holy, I think the important thing for me as a Christian is that uh, I put Christ on the map once more, and this time it's, it's the map of art. I mean, there was a time when religious art was the most important art in the world. You know, before the Renaissance, the only art that's considered important is religious. After the 16th century, religious art is no longer part of the, uh, you know, the community of, of art. It's not uh, taken seriously until Piss Christ, because Piss Christ is serious and it's a Christian work of art. And, and I feel like, you know, it's opened up a dialogue about Christ and it's brought back the name. And, and so I, I feel very pri proud to have been the creator of it as a Christian. Mm -hmm. And I actually feel like, regardless of what it, it meant to you in making it, viewing it as, as both a Christian and just a, an appreciator of art, I really appreciate sort of bringing in iconography that is very sacred and putting it in something that is as earthy as urine, um, which I think for me pulls, pulls that iconography back to the human being in a way that is very moving to me. Yeah. First of all, when I made it, I never thought of it as being blasphemous. I, I, you know, I, artists often work in a vacuum, in a void. Uh, they're not concerned about what others think. And so it was a personal uh, exploration, not only with, uh, with my Christianity, but also with, in the context of the body of work that I was producing at that time. I was working with bodily fluids, uh, blood and milk and piss and later cum. And I thought, well, why not immerse a crucifix in there? Because I've been using uh, Christian uh, iconography for a while before I did the bodily fluids. So, you know, Piss Christ is really coming together to two bodies of work coming together in one image. But at the same time, now that I reflect on it, I think that, you know, the crucifix itself has lost its meaning. You know, it, it represents the death of a man on a crucifix who died, uh, you know, not only on a cross and, and bled to death, you know, he probably defecated on himself. You know, he peed all over himself. Everything came out. It was a, a disgusting way to die, you know? And, and, and so, you know, if this image, you know, uh, upsets you in any way, maybe you, sh you should reflect on what that crucifix, that meaningless little object which Madonna uses as, used as a, f a fashion icon when she was in her 20s, that, you know, maybe you should connect with the true meaning of what that object means. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, moving into another type of iconography, uh, can you tell us about sort of the, this one series you had, Sign of the Times, mm -hmm. and now this series that we're sort of gathering around for the past few weeks here at Judson, uh, residents of New York, and bridge those two things? Um, I, I, I'd love to know more about them. Well, Sign of the Times came as a result of all the homeless people that I saw on the streets of New York uh, asking for money. And, you know, I'm a New Yorker, I've been here all my life, and I, 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 saw, I thought I saw more homeless than ever last year um, in October. And so I noticed these signs and I started buying them, uh, not knowing exactly what I was going to do with them, but knowing that I wanted to amass a collection. And, uh, you know, after walking around the streets of New York City for about four weeks, I bought about 200 signs and I made a video called Sign of the Times with the signs. Uh, and, and I felt like it wasn't a political point or message in it, but I thought it was very telling that all those people, all those homeless people appeared on the streets uh, at the end of the Bloomberg administration. He was leaving and it was almost like saying, you know, I don't give a damn anymore, you know? You know, let the, let the floodgates open, you know? And so, uh, so I bought the signs, made it into a video, and then a few months later, I had, uh, you know, I had been asked to do an installation, a public installation with more art. And I thought, well, you know, I, let me continue this idea of working with the homeless. And so I decided to go out a, a early January of this year, uh, particularly when it was cold, the coldest month of the year, 
and, f and I photographed uh, the people that I found on the streets, homeless people on the streets. And we did it with a four by five camera with an assistant and, and others helping us. And I, uh, you know, I particularly liked the idea of photographing the homeless on the streets, but doing it not with a digital camera, with, with, with a camera with film, and it's not only, a, uh, you know, and, and it's a particular kind of camera. It's a four by five camera. So it means it goes on a tripod. It's a big deal to have to set it up. And so I, I you know, I'll, just like the homeless live on the streets, I set up my studio on the streets with them to photograph them. And what did, in those conversations that you ended up having when you were attempting these photographs, what did you think you were going to talk about and what was the most surprising thing that you talked about with, with one or several of those residents? Well, you know, I, I didn't talk much because uh, I'm interested in, in photographing the person. And so my exchanges consisted basically of asking permission to take their picture and then, uh, and then we'd talk a little bit, I'd hear things. But, uh, you know, I, I, when I was buying signs, I, I heard even more things, you know. Uh, I remember one girl who had a sign. Uh, she was probably the youngest person I saw on the street, home, you know, homeless, asking for money. And she was about 16 years old probably. I forgot to ask her her age. Her sign said, uh, Mom told us to wait right here. Uh, that was 10 years ago. Uh, so, I mean, she was abandoned when she was six, you know. Uh, and, and so, uh, I mean, but a lot of the time, what I encountered with the people that I did speak, did speak to was that one, uh, they had jobs at one time. Sometimes they still had a job. Uh, you know, one guy I, 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 I bought a sign from, he recognized me and he told me he used to work at Getty, Getty Images, mm -hmm. I mean, for like 30 years. So, I, I mean, that's what I learned uh, about the homeless sometimes is they, they, they are not different from you and I. Uh, they're just uh, in, in worse shape, you know, sure. but uh, it can happen to anyone. Mm -hmm. Were you ever refused? I was refused by people who I knew were going to refuse me mm -hmm. because they're crazy. They're the kind of people, homeless people on the street who are not asking for money. They don't have signs and they apparently, they look as if they're out of their minds. And a lot of times they are. You know, they're, they're like uh, the walk, what I call the walking, the real walking dead, real zombies. And, and you know, it's funny because I saw them, do, you know, I saw them at times in very crowded places where they have no clothes on practically. You know, they're filthy, they're talking to themselves and they have this crazed look. And they're among thousands of people walking by them, ignoring uh, this person. But these are what I call the real walking dead. And I would approach them anyway knowing that, that, but at a distance, you know? And what I would say is, hey, can I talk to you? And they would either give a growl or they would give me a dirty look or say something that I knew meant fuck off. Sure. And so I did fuck sure. off. Have you ever, have you had any further contact with any of the subjects? You know, I, I had a contact, uh, a couple of the subjects came to the opening uh, here, uh, but I had contact with, uh, with a, with a couple, you know, pe people that I still see on the street, and whenever I see them, you know, I you know I give them a little something, you know, uh, and I say hello. But uh, w one of the per persons that really affected me was actually, I believe, the first portrait that I did. Uh, it was a couple that I have uh, approached before. I had bought signs from them before, and uh, so I went up to them and I said, "Listen, it they, they were in their twenties." And I said to them, listen, I'm not buying signs anymore, but this time um, I'm taking pictures. Can I take your picture? And uh, you know, I said, I said, you know, I pay everyone, I'll pay you both for it. And they said, sure. And then, I, and then I was looking at the guy, you know, and I said to him, whoa, your eyes are yellow. Your, your eyes are very yellow. And he said to me, yes, uh, I, I'm sick. You know, I've been to the hospital for medication, but uh, yeah, I've have, I have a liter, liver condition. So I took his picture. And, and then two weeks later, another homeless person who knew me as, as someone who had been photographing people around the block said, came up to me and he said, you know that guy read that you photographed, he died. So we, we uh, more art uh, has been in touch with, with the family, you know, and his wife as well. What happens to you spiritually when you set out to take a photograph, when you do take the photograph, and was it different when you were taking these photographs? 
Well, it, there's always a great sense of accomplishment when I, when I do what I set out to do. You know, you, you get ideas and maybe sometimes it, they don't work because you don't make them happen. You don't have the money or, or, or the reason to create. You know, I need a reason to create. Otherwise, I'd be creating for things that uh, are not going to go anywhere because I have so many ideas. So it was good that when more art was very specific, they said, we're going to do installation. And when I knew what they wanted to do, and I knew we were going to do it in a certain uh, space, you know, then I, I, I knew what I wanted, then it was easier to focus. So it's always a great accomplishment to be able to do work because I feel like that's the, that's the best thing I do in life. You know, I do a lot of other things, but this is the best thing. And this is actually the thing that I'm here for, you know. I was put on this earth to create, and so I, I got to follow my destiny, you know. And, and so it's always a, a, a great satisfaction to do that, you know. We all have our purpose, our mission in life, and so when you fulfill yours, you know, you, you can't help but smile. Absolutely. And, and now that you have created this, mm -hmm. do you have a specific thing that you want people who, who view these photographs to take from it, or do you sort of leave that in their hands to figure out on their own? Well, one of the things that really was very rewarding for me was the fact that the installation was uh, put around bus stops and, and uh, telephone uh, play, you know, uh, stops around the city. But more important, it was put in, you know, most of the work was at the West 4th Street subway station. I saw it many times. And these long, you know, in the, these long corridors that people have to pass through uh, to buy their tickets uh, or to get out of the, uh, the subway or to go to their trains. And normally the, there's a lot of ads there selling you something. And so it was a great, uh, it was very satisfying for me to be able to put pictures of my pictures and particularly pictures of homeless people up there in place of those ads. And, and that was, you know, because that's a, that's a hard audience to get. You know, they're, they're rushing a lot of times. They're not looking at, at those stupid ads even. They're looking at their phones or looking straight ahead. Mm -hmm. So it's a great accomplishment to be able to get somebody to actually look at those walls. Mm -hmm. Do you think that art can save the world? I think art, if it doesn't save the world, it, it gets us to the next stage, to the next phase of life, uh, because the world always needs to reinvent itself. And, and so art does that for people. You know, on a practical level, art doesn't really do anything for you. It doesn't feed you. You don't need it for your you know, existence. Uh, and, you know, it has no practical uh, application. And yet we see art from the beginning of history. We see it in the cave paintings, you know? So obviously it fulfills uh, another need, uh, just as essential, even if, even if it's more abstract or spiritual, it, it certainly is part of something that society needs. Mm -hmm. And what, what comes next? What comes after residents of New York? Well, you know, ironically, residents of Brussels probably, because I'm having a, a big retrospective uh, in Brussels next year, and uh, they've asked me to go there to recreate uh, what I did here, take photographs of people uh, on the streets in Brussels and probably put them uh, in a public setting, uh, like the subway station or the, the train station, uh, maybe a couple of billboards in conjunction with my exhibition at, at, the, at the museum there. And so, uh, so that will probably be what I'll do next, you know? Uh, unless I finish my memoirs before that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I need to write my memoirs and I, I uh, and I, I want to do it soon. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us in this space. Yeah, Thanks sure. For bringing art to this All city. Right. It's a great honor. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.